Wake the kids and phone the neighbors. We're going to calculate the moment of a uniform sphere, just like this one. Let's start with a drawing. So here will be the outline of the sphere. And as you know, we always start. It's a three-dimensional object. So i is the integral of rho uh, r squared, the distance to the axis, dv. We've got to deal with the volume integral. We've got to think about uh, the axis of rotation. Well, it goes through the center. So what I'm going to do is, since this is like a 3D sphere, I'll draw kind of like the part on the outside, and then dotted is the part in the back. So there is the cut through the sphere that's a circle, and therefore that's the center of the sphere. It's going to rotate around this thing we'll call the polar axis here, or the z-axis. We're actually going to do this in spherical coordinates. Um, so to get started, let's go ahead and just figure out what rho is. Right? Rho is the density. Rho is the mass, total mass m, over the uh, volume of a sphere. It's 4 thirds pi r cubed. I'll put the 3 up top, promote it. 4 uh, thirds, 4 thirds pi yeah, uh, r cubed. Right, so there's, there's rho. That's the easy part. What we've got to think about now is how do you get the differential volume in spherical coordinates? So you kind of draw it kind of like this. It's a little volume. I like to give it a little, it's kind of like you're drawing a little reflection, you know, a little reflection on the sphere like that. And give it a little bit of a volume like that. And it also has some volume on that side. Now to be able to see what's going on, we draw it bigger. Right? So here is the dv like this. I'll make it kind of come down like that, even though it's not really what exactly it would do, but this will allow you to see uh, the, the volume a little bit better. And we're also going to use spherical coordinates, so we're going to talk about the radius going this way, just like you would expect for a sphere. But then this uh, uh, vertical axis, the z-axis, we come down from that axis to get theta. Right? That's the polar angle. But then we also have to go around this way. That's the azimuthal angle. We use phi. So what you do is you project the tip of your position, your, of the little r, straight down onto this plane. Right? And then you could draw like this line right here. And that's how far around you are. Then if you define another sort of Cartesian axis like this, then that's phi, right? like that. So it takes r, theta, and phi, the radius, the polar angle, the azimuthal angle to define a position in 3D coordinates, and then their differentials to define a differential volume. OK, here we go. So let's think. What is the thickness of this thing? That's just the dr. That's how much we moved in r. So that's that part. Let's think um, as you come down, right? that's just the arc length um, r d theta. Right? So if we come down this thing like this, that's this part, r d theta. Right? So let's see, we got this side, we got that side, we need this side, right? We need the part when you sweep around uh, this way, right? Oh no, that's down when you sweep uh, around that way, which part are you getting? And the answer is, it would, you would think it must just be r d phi, right? But when you're going around this circle, you're actually not going at a full radius r. See, it's this circle uh, as I go around, like this. It's not the full radius that you're going around when you're doing this part. It's a shorter radius. It's the radius of this bar right here. All right? So that is not the full radius r. That is, here's a right triangle. Right? That is r times the sine of theta. So you go around phi on a circle whose radius is r sine theta. Right? So it is an arc length. It's uh, the radius r sine theta d phi. So this is r sine theta d phi. It's an arc length just like this one, but it's not the full radius. It's at a reduced radius. So that is the spherical dv, right? So I can say dv is, and out of the order, I'll do it in the normal order here, r, there it is, r squared. You write the r squared first, r squared sine theta, and then the order doesn't matter, dr d theta d phi, dr d theta d phi. There we go. All right, so a little calculus review for you if you've never seen that before. So now all we got to do is do the integral. So we say i equals 
the integral. So we're going to have three integrals because we've got three differentials. Here we go. Integral, integral, integral. Uh, the constant density is 3m over 4 pi big R cubed. 3m over 4 pi big R cubed, a little r squared. And then dv is r squared sine theta, r squared sine theta, dr, d theta, d phi. And I like to say that this integral goes with the outer one, and it goes in like this, and you just do them one at a time. So in that case, dr is the inner one. We've got to integrate from 0 to big R, like we always do. All right. uh, d theta, in spherical coordinates, let's see, we're going to go phi all the way around. Theta, we just go from 0 to pi. We just go 180 degrees, because phi takes care of the rest. So the d theta integral is 0 to pi. And phi is all the way around, 0 to 2 pi. All right. OK. And let's see. So let's just do the phi integral first, right? Because there's no phi in here. So d phi, integral d phi is phi. Evaluate it at 2 pi, it's 2 pi. Minus evaluate it at 0, 0. So the phi integral just, integral just gives you a 2 pi. Right? So then we've got, let's pull these constants out. 3m, we can go ahead and multiply by 2 pi. That's the phi integral over 4 pi r cubed. We still got to do the theta integral, and we still got to do the r integral. 0 to pi, 0 to r. And now we can say r to the fourth sine theta dr d theta. All right. All right, well, that's promising, I suppose. Um, let's see, r to the fourth sine theta d theta. So now let's do the, uh, the theta integral. right? Integral sine is negative cosine, right? So 3m 2 pi over 4 pi r cubed. Negative cosine evaluated at pi and 0. I'm just going to do the integral in one step here. Um, negative cosine at pi is 1. All right? Yeah, cosine of pi is negative 1. Negative cosine of pi is, is 1. Uh, minus, and then negative cosine of 0 is negative 1 minus negative 1. That's 2. So fortunately, that didn't give you 0, because that would be bad. Um, and then you're left with the integral of r to the fourth from 0 to r. Well, that's 1 fifth r to the fifth from 0 to big R, which, of course, when you evaluate it, is just 1 fifth big R to the fifth. Right. So now we can put all this together. I just kind of did the integrals real fast to say, well, let's see, the pi goes away. That becomes a 2. This 2 cancels that 2. And you end up with 3 fifths m r to the third. That becomes big R to the fifth r squared. That looks pretty good. They're always m r squared, except it's not 3 fifths. It's 2 fifths. <gasps> or maybe it is 3 fifths. And maybe for centuries, everybody's been getting it wrong. And I just got it right. Or maybe I made a mistake. I made the mistake on purpose. Trust me, this is being videoed. I would not have uh, let there be an accidental mistake and try to recover. I made the mistake on purpose to see if you would catch it. So if you caught it and you, you're annoyed, I apologize. Uh, if you didn't catch it, pause the video, see if you can find. Where did we go wrong? The calculus was all done correctly. Welcome back. All right, so where is the mistake? Here's where the mistake is. When we were writing this integral, what is little r? Remember, little r doesn't necessarily match your coordinate system. Little r is the distance between the mass element and the axis of rotation. All right, so little r is not this. It's that each mass element, as we move around the sphere, it's how far it is from this. It's that reduced radius we used here. Ah, uh, yeah. So what that means is our mistake is when I combine these two r's squared to make r to the fourth. Those aren't the same r's, OK? So this is uh, the distance to the rotation axis. And this is the spherical r from the spherical coordinate system that properly sits in the differential. OK, so let's see if we can, if we can fix this. Surely this is fixable. Basically, all you do is you say, r sine theta goes here. Square it, r squared sine squared theta. 
So if that's R squared sine squared theta, you end up still with R to fourth, and this is R, this is sine cubed theta. Ah, uh, sine cubed theta, yeah. So then you got to take the integral of sine cubed theta d theta. And I wanted to do every little step for you, but it's a pain, right? It involves trig identities and a substitution to do the integral, blah, blah, blah. Nobody wants to do that. Um, I don't. Maybe, maybe you do. So it gives you uh, the value for that integral. Um, is it 4 thirds? Yeah, that integral, this integral. So instead of this integral of sine giving you 2, the integral of sine cubed as you go from 0 to pi is 4 thirds. And then this is the same. It's still 1 fourth r to the fifth. So let's see if that helps all our canceling work out better. Let's pretend I didn't have my little cancel party here. Then 4, 4, 3, 3, all pi, pi, r cubed r to the fifth. All you're left with is 2 fifths. And that is the moment of a sphere. 2 fifths mr squared.